This has been a summary of a recent update from Jeffrey Gundlach. Thank you for watching and listening. If you found this video of value, please like and subscribe to the channel for future updates. Gundlach starts by discussing a recent discovery of people living in caves in Modesto, California, which reminds him of a similar situation he encountered years ago while visiting China. He relates this to Plato's allegory of the cave and how it symbolizes people being removed from reality, drawing parallels to modern society's infatuation with virtual reality and the distortion of facts in news and politics. Gundlach then dives into economic data, beginning with the concerning U.S. budget deficit levels. He highlights that even though the economy is supposed to be in an expansion phase, the deficit as a percentage of GDP remains at historically high levels around 6%. His concern is that if a recession hits, the deficit could balloon to double-digit percentages of GDP, exacerbated by rising interest rates and the rollover of trillions of dollars in maturing treasuries at much higher interest rates. He notes that one reason the economy has held up better than expected could be due to the unprecedented surge in M2 money supply during the pandemic, providing a cushion despite negative year-over-year -year M2 growth recently, which is typically a reliable recession indicator. Gundlach examines various other recession indicators, such as the inverted yield curve, which has persisted for an extended period reminiscent of the 1980s. However, he mentions that the curve needs to uninvert and turn positive before confidently calling a near-term recession. Consumer expectations data is also flashing warning signs, but has not fully reverted to levels seen before previous recessions. Employment data is a key focus, as the unemployment rate has recently crossed above its 12-month moving average, which has historically signaled the start of a rapid rise in unemployment during recessions. Gundlach questions the veracity of some economic survey data due to declining response rates over the years. He also analyzes state-level unemployment data, which overwhelmingly shows rising unemployment across most states, seemingly contradicting the national unemployment figures. Gundlach presents a chart showing the divergence between cyclical and non-cyclical employment changes, a pattern that has only occurred before recessions, including the COVID-19 recession. Throughout the update, Gundlach expresses concern about the high debt levels, rising interest costs, and potential overstatement of economic strength if survey data is losing accuracy. He emphasizes the importance of closely monitoring employment figures, particularly the unemployment rate versus its moving averages, as well as the yield curve's behavior, as key indicators of whether the U.S. is truly headed towards a recession or not. Jeffrey Gundlach delves deeper into employment data and inflation figures, expressing concerns about potential inaccuracies and contradictions within the reported statistics. On the employment front, Gundlach highlights a significant divergence between the widely reported establishment survey showing job growth and the household survey data, indicating three consecutive months of full-time job losses, particularly a horrific decline in December. He also points to dwindling part-time employment and rising unemployment rates at the state level as potential signs of labor market deterioration. Gundlach questions the reliability of survey data in general, citing declining response rates over the years, which could undermine the accuracy of surveys like the Employment Cost Index. He presents various other employment indicators that suggest weakness, including declining small business hiring plans, falling average weekly hours in manufacturing, and a concerning rise in the youth unemployment rate patterns reminiscent of previous recessions. Comparing the current unemployment rate trajectory to historical median rates during recessions, Gundlach notes similarities that could foreshadow an imminent economic downturn. He also examines the yield curve's behavior, which seems to be pricing and interest rate cuts by the Fed in 2024, a potential indication of an impending recession. Turning to inflation, Gundlach expresses frustration with the various ways inflation metrics are being dissected, from core CPI excluding shelter, to annualized three-month and six-month rates. He argues that no matter which metric is used, inflation remains stubbornly high, with core CPI decelerating, but still far from the 2% target and headline CPI stalling out due to rising energy prices. Gundlach is particularly concerned about the divergence between the Zillow rent index, which has declined sharply, and the owner's equivalent rent component of CPI, which remains elevated and has surprised to the upside in recent months. However, he notes that the record high number of multifamily units under construction could eventually exert downward pressure on rents. On the positive side, Gundlach highlights that the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, core PCE, is looking better at 2.4% year-over-year. However, he criticizes the Fed's recent focus on super core PCE, which excludes food and energy, and shows a more concerning 3.4% annualized rate over six months. Gundlach emphasizes the erosion of purchasing power experienced by consumers, with the PCE indicating a 14% loss since the start of the inflation surge. 
despite moderating inflation rates, he argues that the high price levels persist, leaving many feeling the continued impact of inflation on their finances. Other indicators discussed include producer price indices, which show minimal inflationary pressures, and commodity prices, which remain subdued and below their 200-day moving average, implying a lack of global economic growth. Unlatch touches on the Treasury market, noting that despite a recent improvement in yields, the 30-year Treasury bond remains deeply underwater for investors who bought at the 2020 peak. He also mentions low volatility in yields and tightening credit spreads, driven by a narrative that investors are indifferent to spreads and focused on the higher absolute yield levels around 4.25%. Unlatch continues his economic analysis by examining credit markets and various fixed income sectors. He expresses skepticism about the recent narrative that investors are indifferent to tight credit spreads and simply focused on the higher absolute yield levels, warning that such complacency toward valuations has ended badly in the past. In the investment-grade corporate bond space, Gundlach notes that yields remain elevated around 4.75%, presenting an opportunity to capture attractive yields through safer asset classes like mortgage-backed securities without taking on excessive risk. Turning to the copper-gold ratio, a metric Gundlach closely follows, he points out a significant divergence from Treasury yields over the past year. This breakdown in the typical relationship suggests either commodities need to decline or yields need to come down to realign with the subdued copper-gold ratio. On the year-to-date performance, Gundlach highlights the outperformance of sectors like CMBS BBB, leveraged loans, and close, which have delivered strong returns. In contrast, investment-grade corporates and agency MBS have lagged. Diving deeper into credit spreads, Gundlach raises concerns about the narrowness of the spread between BB and BBB-rated high-yield bonds, suggesting limited compensation for taking on lower-rated credit risk. Additionally, while the triple C to double B spread is tightened, it remains wide by historical standards, reflecting market concerns about potential defaults, as the Fed maintains its higher for longer policy stance. Unlatch finds value in agency mortgage spreads, which are attractive relative to their long-term averages and offer desirable characteristics like discounted pricing and minimal prepayment risk. He also highlights the outperformance of AAA-rated close spreads compared to corporate bonds and CMBS, making close an attractive holding in double lines portfolios. Emerging market debt spreads have finally participated in the risk rally, tightening after holding steady around 500 basis points for an extended period. In response to audience questions, Gundlach reaffirms his belief that the U.S. is in the midst of the fourth turning, a period of institutional restructuring and resolution of long-standing imbalances, as outlined in Neil Howe's book. He expects this transition to accelerate, potentially concluding by 2032 at the latest. Addressing a question on why the government didn't issue more debt when rates were at historic lows, Gundlach agrees it was a missed opportunity, attributing the decision to short-term considerations and potential concerns about pushing long-term rates even higher. On the path of interest rates, Gundlach's base case envisions a scenario where short-term rates decline due to Fed policy easing, while long-term rates potentially rise amid inflationary pressures and excessive deficit spending. He believes the 10-year Treasury yield could reach the 3-3.5% range before a crack of doom moment, where investors realize the unsustainability of low long-term rates, given the debt and deficit dynamics. Unlatch acknowledges the potential for radical debt restructuring or changes to the tax code to address the ballooning interest expense burden, which could reach 30 to 50 percent of tax receipts in a recession scenario by 2028, under the current framework. Finally, addressing a question on immigration offsetting job losses, Gundlach clarifies that employment data counts jobs, not people. He notes a remarkable statistic under the Biden administration, where domestically born employment has declined while non-US born employment has surged, potentially reflecting retirements among the baby boomer cohort and insufficient domestic replacements.